Amen. Amen. Praise God we're here today. I just thank you. All of you, um, well, not all of you, because some of you weren't here um, a couple weeks ago, but um, uh, most all of you know uh, a couple weeks ago I did a pulpit swap with uh, Pastor Jeff down in Yankton, and so I was there. He was here. Some of you remember you had a much better pastor that weekend. It's fine. And so, um, and, and, and thankfully I wrote him the notes telling him how wonderful I was, so, um, and if you heard his message you know what I'm talking about so um, but anyway Pastor Jeff asked me a, a while back about uh, if we would be do this pulpit swap and I, I jumped at the idea and there was a reason I jumped at the idea and actually um, it all led to today's message um, I jumped at the idea uh, of, of, of sw- swapping pulpits because we did the 25 year celebration couple weeks before that, right? We were in Sioux Falls celebrating uh, our mother church's 25th anniversary, right? And so, and the reason I wanted everyone there was because I wanted you to see, to, to see history. I wanted you to see vision for the future. I wanted you to see that we're not alone. This isn't the only celebrate. This isn't the only part of the body. This is, there, there's so much more to this than what we have inside the walls of this building, right? And, and I know that I'm not uh, the world's greatest preacher, um, and I don't always have all the answers, and I don't always explain everything the right way, and I, my, my heart was that you would receive from there something you couldn't receive from me because I didn't deliver it right, or whatever. And so I wanted you to see this is a much bigger picture than what's in this room. And so another part of the reason is because I have a fear, I have a concern, not a fear that trembles me or makes me stay awake every night, but a fear that, I have a fear that, I, I, I'll only leave this pulpit, I'm not here, what, twice a year at most usually, right, so about 50 times a year, you all get to go numb to me, okay, um, let's be honest, right, the same drone going on, right, so, so y'all, uh, you can get used to me, right, the other thing that happens sometimes is if nobody else ever is in this pulpit, if nobody ever, uh, and I, don't, I won't put anyone up here just willy-nilly, right? But, but, but anyone, uh, if no one else is up here and all you have is me, you, there's that tendency to try to put me on a pedestal. To, to start believing that I'm the only pastor. And that's simply not true. And the last thing I want, and I preach it over and over, over and over again never put me on a pedestal never i'm just i'm just another sinner saved by grace just like any follower of jesus christ now god might have called me to preach and teach but but i'm still a sinner saved by grace i'm not perfect and the problem is that sometimes we put someone up on a pulpit and or on a pedestal i mean and what happens is that then then we go when they don't live up to our expectations, they go and push the pedestal over. And so that's part of my fear is, and that was part of my heart with the whole thing with, with swapping pulpits, also was the fact that, I, unfortunately, we've had people put me up on a pedestal, even though I've begged you not to, and, and they've pushed the pedestal over when I didn't fit their criteria of the perfect pastor. When, when they found out I was like human and stuff, you know, I mean, it's kind of weird. But because I wasn't perfect in whatever way they thought I should be perfect, right? And so I wanted, that was part of the reason for that also, that pulpit swap also. And when we, when we decided to, uh, uh, Paul spoke to this, by the way, I don't know if you knew this or not, that, that, that um, um, he said in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, he said, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some, of Chloe, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Apollos, another, I follow Cephas, still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. So no one could say that you were baptized in my name. Yes, I also baptized the house of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. 
For Christ did not tend for me, uh, did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied in His power. And I want to personalize this a little bit with you. If we go back to verse 12, where it says, "What I mean is this: one of you says, I follow Sheldon; another, I follow Jeff; another, I follow Keith; still another, I follow Christ." Is Christ divided? Was Sheldon divided for you? Is in the name of Jeff? We start worshiping people. And when you try putting me on a pedestal, it wasn't my blood that saved you. It isn't my blood that cleanses you. It wasn't my sacrifice. It was Jesus. And sadly, Unfortunately, there are times that people are like, I won't listen to anyone else except for you. I'm sorry. I feel really bad for you because the reality is I'm not the only preacher out there who preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? And so I just want to, that, that's part of my heart. So when Jeff and I, we agreed to do this pulpit swap, um, back, to, back to the original, uh, when, we, we, when we agreed to do it, um, we were like, okay, so should we, you know, because we were in um, uh, What a Fish, right, in the series What a Fish, based on Jonah and all that, and, and I, yeah, honestly, I guess I didn't ask Jeff if they were in the middle of a series, if we were going, interrupting the series or not, I didn't ask. I just said, hey, how about we just do, let you do whatever message God puts in your heart for Celebrate Canton, and I'll do the message he puts on my heart for Celebrate Yankton for that day. Right? And, oh, and, and the campground, camp ministry down there. And so it doesn't, doesn't matter. It interrupt the series. I could care less, right? Because I believe God's got a message for us, right? And, and Jeff and I were like, yeah, that, that's a great idea. So that's what we did. And so when, when we did that, I, no more than had we talked about that, then God said, wow, worship. And I was like, great message title. <laughs> wow, worship. We're going to, yeah. And then he went on to tell me, it's not wow, worship. It's wow as in an acronym, who or what do you worship? Who or what do you worship? And he convicted me a little more afterwards. After we came back from there, he convicted me again and said, now, share it with your congregation. Share it with Celebrate Canton. As I said, we have a tendency to lift people up on a pedestal. There's a problem with that. I don't know if you knew this or not, but God has an issue with that. Because when we put them on a pedestal, what are we doing? We're elevating them. We're doing what? We're making them into an idol. We're making them into a God, a little G God. And God's word says something about that. I don't, just in case you didn't know. Exodus 20, verse 2 and 3. Deuteronomy 5, verse 6 and 7 say actually the exact same thing. They say, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall, have no, you shall not raise your pastor or anyone or anything else up onto a pedestal and worship them instead of me. You might recognize those words because you might have heard them because they're part of the first download from the cloud to a tablet. I don't know if you knew that or not. It's a tech joke, okay? Remember Moses went up the hill, right? <laughs> There's the stone tablet. Okay, so anyway, if I have to explain, it's not going to be that good. So um, anyway, uh, it's part of those pesky little Ten Commandments, right? Hi, sweetheart. It's part of those pesky little Ten Commandments, right? Um, it, it, you know, you know those things in the Old Testament, and, and before you go there, I'll go there, right? Because I'm not afraid to address it. Um, we, there's some of us that have this mindset that it's the Old Testament. We don't have to pay any attention to it anymore. Oh, we're, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We don't have to worry about the commands anymore. We, 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 but that's old. That, that was then, and this is now, and it doesn't count back then. What was back then? But I think Jesus addresses that. I know Jesus addresses that. In Matthew 5, verse 17 19 says, through 19, says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law, which is those pesky little things put down on a tablet. That's where it started, the law thing, you know? So, and so, um, I have not come to abolish the law or the prophets. 
I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter nor the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So when someone says the Old Testament doesn't count anymore, well, that was thousands of years ago. That doesn't matter anymore. Whenever anyone says anything like that, if the Bible, if God were right, I've had someone tell me this, if God were writing the Bible now, it wouldn't be so harsh and it wouldn't be so offensive and it would be much more inclusive. That's a beautiful word we have nowadays. I, I, I want to help you understand this. Is what, what Jesus said, he said this, he said, for truly I tell you until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter nor the least stroke of a pen will by any means. I think. And as long as Earth's still here, as long as as long as this world Jesus hasn't returned, as long as we're it, it, not, none of it's changed. The the law and the prophets, uh, Jesus said, those are them beautiful red letters that we love so much. None of it's changed. I don't recall seeing a bunch of people go poof gone. Right, whatever, whatever your theory is on that, right? I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't recall anything changing. It seems to me the same people were here today as they were yesterday and last week. It seems to me there wasn't a, because according to our scriptures, it's going to be like we're going to know, right, when things shake up. <laughs> and I don't, I did not notice any of the big boom going on, right, and so any of the hoopla going on. So, so the problem is that, that, that if you're saying that the Old Testament no longer matters, but Jesus said that not a, not a letter, not a, a, a tittle or a tattle, I've heard it called, uh, of God's word can be changed, and none of it, the brush stroke can't be changed, none of it changes until heaven and earth, Right? I mean, what Jesus just got done telling us, right? And so, so if that's the case, then what God wrote in the beginning of his word accounts to the day and all the way up until when Jesus shared with us that one book called Revelation. And when that comes to fulfillment. So it stays, it all counts at this point. And if you believe, because I had this, um, well, but God didn't know. He didn't, he didn't know what today was going to be. Today's so bad, God had no idea. He couldn't. How could he have seen that? If you're one of the people who's told me that, then you've heard me tell you, you don't worship the same God I do. Because the reality is, the God that I worship, when every stroke was put in this book, when his love letter was written, God knew everything that was going to happen, no matter how many thousand years ago, whichever part of the Bible you're in, no matter what it, 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 then, what it was before it was written, what was going to ha- where we're going to be at. He, he knew that today, guess what? The world's going to be kind of a crapshoot. He knew it was going to be kind of rough right now. My God knew that. My God knew that Jesus was coming, not just two. He didn't 2,000 years ago go, you know, gosh, we got a problem. Jesus, could you do me a favor? Go down and check this out here. He didn't do that, right? He knew. Jesus was with him in the beginning, and God knew from the very beginning that he was going to sacrifice his son because he knew we would fall to sin because, unfortunately, he gave Well, not unfortunately. Fortunately, thankfully, he gave us choice. He gave us a free will. He gave us an open heart. We could choose what we want. He never sends anyone to hell. He allows you to choose to go there, but he doesn't send you there. Right, and so, so, so God knew then, and so God knew two thousand years ago when Jesus walked this earth. God knew also then what was going to be happening today. There's no shocker to Him. He already had prepared for it. The problem is we continue to worship something other than God. We continue to worship a lot of things in this world. And some of you might be like, well, but I don't worship. No, the only thing, I, I only worship God. It's the only thing I worship. Well, worship might be kind of a strong word, but you know, I really do like this stuff over here. But, you know, I, think, I like God more. 
right? We had those kind of conversations. We had those kind of thoughts. The reality is most of us are worshiping something or someone other than God. I'm not saying you're not worshiping God at all, but we're worshiping other things more than God. We's a broad, we is that broad brush stroke I talk about. So if, you, if you're saying, nope, God's the only one I worship, then great. But I guarantee you the people sitting around you are doing something different. That there's someone around you that's, that's worshiping other than God. And if you don't believe me, help, let, let me help you come to understand who or what you're worshiping. So who or what do we worship? First thing, what, what gets more of your time? What gets more of your time? Does God, his word, your relationship with him, do, does he get more time or does the thing, mm, your family? Or for the workaholics, your job? Or for the sports fanatics, your sport, whatever sport it is? Or maybe for the partier, the party? Or maybe... And I sh- and so and so, but the camping thing, I'm like, um, you remember that I'm going to a campground, right? And you want me to put camping on this list? And he was pretty adamant we need to have camping on that list. And I'm thankful that he did. I was at the campground, and I really, before I shared the message on it, I'm like, oh, there's like 16 people here, right? And I'm like, oh, uh, these guys, they're going to have, they're going to have tomatoes, they're going to have eggs, they're going to have axes. I don't know what they're going to have, but uh, things are going to be flying, right? And I'm like, oh, I don't really want to see. And I, I told you, I just told them. I said, okay, so I'm going to ask you, did anyone bring any produce? No, huh? You know, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I don't want you throwing tomatoes or eggs at me, Okay. Um, uh, but, but here's the thing, God told me to include this, right? And I included the camping in a campground that has a lot of long-term campers, um, a lot of people who go there weekend after weekend after weekend after weekend. And I shared that, and, and, and I thanked him for not throwing stuff. Um, and, uh, but, but the reality is what we spend our time on is what we're worshiping. Where are we investing our time? Wherever it's at, that's what we're worshiping. That's what's important to us. I'm not saying you're not supposed to love your family. I'm not saying you shouldn't love your job. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy camping. But are you showing God that love? Or just whatever it is you're in love with? What's your God? Where are you spending your time? I'm really glad he shared that, or that that he, 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 he... would not leave me alone in that one because, again, 16 people for a congregation that morning and, and, and all campers and uh, uh, only one child. So there was like 15 that could have went to prison if they threw axes. And so, right, but, but, the, but after service, I had a gentleman come up to me and say, I'm really glad you shared that. I'm glad you did not omit camping. And I was like, oh, he's a serial killer. He's been looking for his next victim. And uh, now he's got to, no, no, no. I said, I said, why? Why is that? And he goes, I needed to be convicted on that. He said, thank you for sharing that. Praise God. Amen. And he said, after today, I got some soul searching to do. And I need to make some changes. Praise God. It's your time. And why do we worship? Uh, why do we worship these things? Why do we worship these things? Or, or you could put in idols, things, idols. Um, why do we worship these things? Most often we're seeking, I mentioned a minute ago, we're usually seeking something else. What we're usually seeking is something for self. Most of the time, when we, the reason that we're, we worship these other things is because we're looking for self-worth, self-completion, or self-fulfillment. We are continually looking for self, what I want for me, what I want, what I need to complete me, what I need to make myself feel good about me. It's about self. 
there's, there's, there's a, a story uh, of two guys who were talking. And, and uh, they were talking about all the world's problems. They're solving the world's problems. Anyone ever accuse you? My wife tells me all the time, oh, did you guys get the world's problems solved? <laughs> you were there talking long enough. You should have had them all solved, right? And I'm usually, no, we missed one. And I'll talk to you about that one later. <laughs> and so, but, um, but no, we, uh, <laughs> we, we, so these guys are, are talking about all the world's problems, how to solve all the world's problems, so to speak. And, 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 and one says to the other, he says, I don't understand how I can have all this stuff, beautiful ladies on my arm and enough money to make rich people jealous, but I just feel so alone. But then there's you. You aren't broke, but you aren't rich, yet you're happy. You have a real nice wife, but live a very mundane life with lots of stuff to do for the wife, the house, and the kids. Your excitement is taking your family to church on Sunday mornings and helping out with the various community projects. And you seem to be very happy. How come? And the answer from his friend was very simple and easy. He said, well, I start off my day by saying, Lord, thanks for the power and ability to live another day. What do you want me to do for you today? And he followed it with, and then I get out of bed and get into God's word. Then I get, God, what is it you want me to do? Thanks for giving me the day while I'm in bed. And then I get out of bed and get about the Lord's business, get into God's word, doing what God's called him to do. And he goes on to say, he says, and I talk with God always at work, at home, at the restaurant, everywhere I go. And he blesses me by giving me all that I need. Which brings us to who should you worship? Who should you worship? God provides all that we need. He gives us everything we need. Who should we worship? Well, God, of course, right? Remember that whole Exodus 20 thing, right? Um, Where he said uh, we should have no other gods before him. Um, which means that there's only one God who we're supposed to be worshiping. And it's a big G God, not the little G God. It's not an idol or, or anything like that. It, it, it's, it's our God, our creator. And some say, well, but how do I worship then? What do I need to do? How, how can I worship? So, so according to Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. When this gentleman wakes up in the morning and the first thing he does is he talks to God and says, Lord, what do you got for me today? Thank you for giving me this day. What do you got for me for today, right? And then gets out of bed and then gets into God's word to hear more from God as to what he needs to do for his day. That's worship. That's worship. What do we, how else do we worship? We worship with, we, we just sang, so, well, maybe you sang, maybe you didn't sing. I don't know if you did or not, I did. And if you heard the dog growling back there, that was me. Um, and so, you know, I mean, it's, it, but it's the voice he gave me, so it's still okay. So, um, but, but the reality is we, with our worship music, sometimes we call worship music worship, but, but, but it is, and it is, but just because it's music doesn't make it worship. We can worship it in so many other ways. We can do it through our actions. We do it through our words, through how, how we think and how we act and how we treat other people. By what it is we do with our life throughout the course of our day. I worship God all the time. I, wa- I worship God in my, in my pickup. I worship God when I'm driving the bus. I worship God when I'm driving the riding lawnmower. Right? I, I don't worship him when I'm riding the push mower. Um, no. <laughs> Seeing if you're awake. Um, so uh, I worship him when I'm in, the, in whether I'm weeding uh, uh, the, the giving garden or picking produce or delivering, sharing the, the produce that God's blessed us with to give to others. Um, I worship God when I'm doing that. I'm constantly talking to God, asking God, right? Um, uh, I worship him when I'm in the shower. I worship him when I'm hunting. I worship God whenever, wherever I'm at. It's, it's, he is my focus. I even worship God when I'm angry. And I had someone ask me one time, how can you worship God when you're angry? Because I turn to God because I know I'm angry. And, and if it's not something that I should be angry about, if it's not something I should be worked up about, I'm asking for the strength for me to be forgiving and loving instead. To quell the anger. Doesn't matter what mood we're in. Doesn't matter if we're hurting really bad or we're mad or if we're happy or whatever. We should be worshiping God. There's, no, there's never a time you can't be in conversation with God. 
There's never a time God, in that conversation, that's a relationship with God, and he wants us to do that, and that is worshiping him. Praise God. Who do you turn to when you have a struggle? God, I hope. That's who it should be. Who do you have when you're rejoicing? Who's the first one you want to thank about something that went really great? No, your wife's not it. God. Right? We can worship God in all things, no matter what we're doing. And we can do it, as, as Deuteronomy 6, 5 says, with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our strength. So why, number three, why do we worship only God? Why do we worship only God? Well, for one thing, God says he's a jealous God. Um, Exodus 20, verse 5 says what? He says, you shall not bow down, God's talking about those idols again. He says, you shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Why should we worship God and only God? Because of that, but also because of the fact he sent his son. Remember that whole John 3.16 thing? Remember the whole cross thing, right? God loved us. He's provided for everything for us. He's loved us. He is love. Not just that he has love. He is love. God is equal to love, synonymous as love. If we look at Jesus' life, Jesus, as he walked the earth, his entire walk on earth was about building relationships. And if we want to love God, we need to have a relationship with God. That's what Jesus did the whole way through. It was never, it was never, it wasn't about what Jesus wanted. It was, he loved God, he had relationship with God, but then he loved you and I enough to do, to go to the cross enough for him to sacrifice himself, be willing to be the perfect lamb, the blood shed, blood shed for the cleansing of our sins, for our redemption, for our salvation. Everything he did in the New Testament was about relationships, whether it was, whether it was te- uh, calling and teaching disciples, raising them up, whether it was sending those disciples out, whether it was talking to the woman at the well, whether it was going to Matthew's house, you know, that evil, wicked tax collector, no matter what it was he was doing, he was constantly building relationships. He was, even bu- he was even working on relationships when he was hanging on the cross. He gives his earthly mother a new son to help with her relationship, to help with her life, connecting that relationship even more. Gave John a new mother, someone to care for, right? And, and just strengthening, reinforcing that relationship. He never stopped. It, it, then think about the thief on the cross. Okay, over and over, Jesus to his dying moment, what he did was relationship. But it wasn't relationship for him, it was all about what God wanted. When he's in the garden and he's like, take the cup from me, if you will, take it. Man, this is going to hurt. I really, I'm struggling on this one, right? And and not that he was struggling because he didn't want to do it, but he's like, is there another way you could do it? But not my will, but your will be done. I, 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 uh, there's things that we do that we got we got this stuff going on. And it's like oh, but I don't really want to do it. But is God leading you to it? If God's leading you to it, just do it. And it probably is going to hurt, but I bet it doesn't hurt like it hurt Jesus. He was all about relationships, all about it. To come to complete the law, to complete. The, the prophets, build those relationships, redeem the lost. That's what Jesus came for. And I just got to tell you, the only one I want to worship is God. He's the only one I want to worship. He's the only one who gave absolutely everything for me. He's the only one who taught me how to love. And there's some of you all, right? You love very well, and, and I've learned things from you, kind of, but, but ultimately the love comes from God. He's the only one I want to worship. And when we'll worship him, God will do amazing things in us. That's not why I love him, though. God's my God. He knew I was going to have struggles. He knew I was going to have challenges. He knew things were going to be a little wonky here in 2024. He knew what was going on, and he's my God. And he provided for me in all things and everything. 
I'm stoked. I just want you to understand this. I'm stoked as we wrap up. I'm stoked for Canton. I'm stoked for Celebrate Canton. I'm stoked for this entire community. I'm stoked for this area, this region. I'm stoked for each and every one of you. The reason I'm stoked is because I know that God's our God, and I know God will continue to do what he asks of, or what, he, what he's promised to do if we'll do what we've at, been asked to do. I know that he planted Celebrate Canton here. I didn't plant it. You didn't plant it. We didn't plant it. God planted it by our obedience, and I know he planted it here for a reason. And I've shared with you before that, that it's never gone away. I know God planted Celebrate Canton so that he could send disciples out from here to elsewhere. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I know that God's called us here to share the gospel with those around us. I know he's called us to come and serve. And I'm stoked about what's going to happen when we all get on board and we all do what we're called to do. And we choose to love like Christ love instead of choosing like worldly love. See, because we, we, we have a tendency, we take, um, what do we worship, right? What or who we worship? Well, unfortunately, as, as I shared, you know, the sports, the camp, and the whole thing, right? Unfortunately, we've gotten to, some of us are in a place Some of us are in a place, and maybe someone watching this even, you know, a year down the road from now. And they're going to be like, oh, that's me. Some of us are in a place where we've chosen to worship the things of the world versus our God. But I'm stoked because I know when we start worshiping God the way we worship the things of the world, that's when things are going to blow up in a godly, glorious way. See, because here's the thing, right? So, so. We'll just take football season because it's here, okay? So we start with the NFL on Thursday night. Oh, we're glued to our TV. Uh, we, we, we move into Friday, and I know several people who do this, okay? So, in fact, I sat with someone at the football game on Friday night, okay? Because um, Friday we move into the high school football. We're checking all the high school football out. We're glued to it. And then come Saturday, we got all the college going on. Oh, got college, 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 all day long. Then today, thank God that they started doing football in, the, in the Europe and so we can watch it right away in the morning on Sunday because I wouldn't have made it. I needed to put in my IV this morning. I don't have time. I don't have time. I, there's no time for it. I spent five days watching football, but I have no time to get into God's word. When we're doing serving opportunities and you're struggling, he's like, oh, I just can't. There's just not enough time. Oh, we can't do that. I got to get home to watch the game. Who are you worshiping? Who are we worshiping? When we refuse to reflect Jesus to the community around us. When we refuse to love like God, we're not worshiping God. We're worshiping whatever it is. And that might be NASCAR. That might be uh, uh, baseball. That's going like, what, what's that go, like 350 days a year or something? I don't know, right? Uh, it might be whatever, right? So I, I use NFL because I know NFL. Because um, uh, I used to be that guy. And it happens to be on right now. When we are willing to go and do what God's called us to do, when we will wow worship God, where it is an exclamation, when we're willing to wow worship God, wow God, thank you God, that was awesome God, thank you for the opportunity God, thank you for the breath today God, thank you for the pulse today, Lord what is it you want me to do today God, your word says when we're willing to do that, we get to that point. God will use us to do what it is he has us here to do. Had the opportunity. There's the giving garden, right? Um, 
out there uh, harvested it again on 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 Thursday and was out delivering some produce and we had some new people that I was I was connected with that we were able to give some produce to who were struggling financially right so drop it off produce and I had one lady that that we were talking and and she said she her and I were talking about it and she's talking about how you know things are tough and whatever and and uh, we're talking and and she says so this produce is awesome she says so how do you get fresh produce to people then in the winter time after the frost hits and the garden's dead. And I say, she says, do you have a hothouse? Now, I'm not sure what a hothouse is, but I'm thinking it's a greenhouse, right? Uh, but I t- So I said, no, we don't have a hothouse. Now, I'm hoping she didn't mean home because that's warm. But, you know, but, but so she says, do you have a hothouse? I said, no, we don't, we don't have a greenhouse or anything like that. I said, unfortunately, when the frost hits and it takes care of it, it takes care of it, and then we don't have anything till the following year when it starts producing. Not when we plant it, but when it starts producing, right? She said, oh, I could see it in her eyes. Oh, she's not struggling just during the summer. She's struggling year-round. She's in income-adjusted housing for a reason. And it got me thinking, okay, God, because I, you've heard me say it before, I don't believe God connects us with anyone without a purpose behind it, right? I don't have a conversation with anyone that he doesn't have a plan for that conversation. And again, we think, okay, God, so what do we do? Now, how do we provide? Maybe it's not produce. I don't know what it is. But if she's struggling financially, how are we able to help her in the wintertime so that maybe she can buy the produce then because we don't have it? It got me thinking, okay, Lord, do we put a greenhouse in? We're going to extend the season a couple months. Maybe there's actually a hot house. I don't know. But it got me thinking, Lord, what do you want me to do? How do we fill the gap? How do we serve our community, the people who are struggling? How do we love them like Jesus loves? And where else are we missing, Lord? Where else are we missing the mark? What I know is this. If we will wow worship God. If we will wow worship God like we do so many other things in our lives, if we will wow worship God, he will use us to meet the needs of those around us. He will use us to continue to move forward in all the different things. It's the the fifth Sunday serve. It's like I've been asking for months and we still have nothing on the schedule for December. I've had no, I've had zero suggestions how can we help our community this sunday this december let's stop worshiping the stuff the world and let's start saying god what is it you want us to do what's the next thing how can we wow worship you as we take the next step forward what's the next step forward because it's not this building it's not this body this body meeting in this building to go out and be Christ to the community around us. It's us saying, Lord, what is it? Because he's probably telling you what it is he wants us to do. He's probably already given the answer, but we just haven't received it. Or we've said, but it'll interrupt my NFL. It's going to interrupt my NASCAR. That would mess with Major League Baseball. And for all you weird people, you know, it's going to mess up soccer season. So I didn't want to leave it out, right? And so what is it that if we are willing to say yes to God that he wants us to do next? And it's never about wow, wow, celebrate, but it's always about wow, God. Wow, God. Wow, God, that's all it's about. Father God, I don't know the answer. I don't have the answer to that question. I don't, I don't, I don't, what is the next step? But I know within my heart, I know with everything in me that, Lord, you have something else you want us to do. And Father God, you're waiting for us to start wow worshiping you. 
You're waiting for us to start serving you. You're waiting for us to step into the gap. You're waiting for us to step up and say, here am I. Here am I. And we probably need a coal touched to our lips that we can speak the words. We, we, we probably need to be confronted about something in our life so that we can be a man or woman after God's own heart. Father God, I don't know what it is. I, have, I don't know what each person has. I can only speak for me, Father. All I want to do is serve you. All I want to do is love like you. That's all I want to do. And I know I've let you down. And ultimately, Lord, all I can say is, wow, I blew that. But Father God, all I want to do is wow worship. So Father God, I pray that each person here will open their hearts to you right now and receive what it is you have for them right now. That poking, that prodding, that nudging, that screaming, whatever it is. Most likely, though, it's a still, quiet voice speaking to them that they would receive the guidance you're trying to give. Father God, I just ask that you help each one of us to become who it is you ask us to be and that we move forward. We move forward, dear Lord. That we as a body can move forward, that we as individuals can move forward and be exactly who it is you've called us to be individually as a part of this body. Which hand or foot or toenail or ear are we supposed to be? And Father God, for this community that we go out and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ and we continue to serve in more ways to a greater extent the kingdom according to your will. That this community would be served as the kingdom would have it served. And we just pray these things in Jesus' loving name. Amen.